it may be April Fool's Day. Oh, wow. As it is today. But there's no fooling around here. You only got two fools to listen to today. Yep. 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 (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Hello, welcome to this week's episode of the Season Lamb Check Up OVA. It's a podcast where we have conversations about video games, anime, and manga. Hello, I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Ow and Ladium. Hello, hello. This is episode number 327. And we're going to talk about a game we have somehow neglected to talk about for 327 episodes. Well, we've talked about it in various other avenues, but not dedicated a full-length episode to it. Correct. That's that's the caveat there. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, uh, we're going to talk about Persona 4. Uh-huh. Which is a video game. You may have heard of it before. Maybe once or twice. Maybe once or twice. So yeah, this is, I think, going to be a, a little bit of a different episode than normal. Like, we're not... Like, if we sit here and talk about the story, we could do that for, like, an hour or two. Mm-hmm. But, like, I feel like we've probably done that at other points in time throughout the history of this podcast. Or, like, stuff that we've done outside of this podcast. So, like, is there's not really a whole, like, big benefit to really diving into the story of Persona 4. Mm-hmm. Uh, instead, we're going you know, to talk about the history of it and all that sort of stuff, like, as we normally do, but like, one of the key things that, for both of us, when we replayed this game earlier this year, was really seeing how well this game actually still holds up. Yeah. Like, does it, does it maintain that status in our memories as, you know, it did before, or like, has our thoughts and opinions on it changed in the the years that have passed since we last played it. And I think that was going to be the interesting thing coming out of it was seeing, you know, what exactly are our thoughts about this game now compared to, you know, maybe like a decade, decade plus prior. Yeah, because what, the original one came out in 2008? It did, yes. And then Golden was 2012? Yes. Okay, so I mean, like, I've, I've, probably played persona 4 since then um i'm pretty much can guarantee it because i played it on the the vita quite a few times Mm -hmm. um but it had been a hot second and i've been like itching to replay it and then you know they re-release it on the switch and stuff i'm like well my time has come true to replay the persona 4 yeah, as you said, uh, this came out originally on the PlayStation 2 in 2008, in July of 2008 in Japan and December of 2008 in North America. Uh, it was then ported to the PlayStation Vita with some enhanced upgrades and additions and story elements and all that sort of stuff called Persona 4 Golden in, on June 2012 in Japan and November 2012 in North America. It was then ported to the PC on June 13th, 2020. And then came out on Switch, PS4, and the Xboxes on January nineteenth, twenty twenty three. So it's it's been a weird yes, it's been a weird couple of years because you know prior to this like P four had only been on the PS two and the Vita, and now it's like everywhere, everywhere. And it's such a very odd thing to think about considering it's been like you know for the most part fourteen years where it was like or I guess like listen now maybe like a decade or so. A little bit over a decade of just it being available on two things that really aren't supported anymore. Now it's just everywhere and anyone can play it. Yeah, and I mean, like, by the time Persona 4 came out, it was 2008. So, like, we were in the PS3 era at the point. Two years deep. Yeah, so. Like, that is late PS2. That is very late PS2. Like, it's like, oh, hey, here's this new, here's the new PS2 games. It's Persona 4 and another version of FIFA. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Pretty much. Yep. Uh, let's talk about the development of this video game. Okay. Uh, according to the game director, Katsura Hoshino, while ideas had been thrown around earlier, development on Persona 4 in Japan did not begin until after the release of Persona 3. Uh, the development team consisted of the team for Persona 3 and new hires, which included fans of Persona 3. Atlas intended to improve both the gameplay and story elements of Persona 3 for the new game to ensure it was not seen as a retread of its prede- predecessor. There's words. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hashino said that to accomplish that, we tried to give the players of Persona 4 a definite goal and a sense of purpose that would keep motivating them as they played through the game. The murder mystery plot was our way of doing that. 
The plot of Persona 4 was greatly inspired, according to Hashino, by mystery novelists, novelists such as Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Agatha Christie, and Seishi Yokomizo. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Uh, Persona 4 was officially unveiled in the Japanese gaming magazine Famitsu in March 2008. An article in the issue detailed the game's murder mystery premise, rule setting, and new weather forecast system. The game's North American release date was announced at the 2008 Anime Expo in Los Angeles, California. Atlas would not make an add-on disc or epilogue for Persona 4 as it had done with the per Persona 3 Thez, which, I mean, they would do later, but... Yeah. Quite a few years later. Yeah. Uh, Persona 4 allowed players full control of characters in battle. Woo! This was due to this was due to negative comments from players about most of the player team in Persona 3 being controlled by the game's AI. So, because P3P comes out after this as well, so correct. We're not even at the, the point where P3P has player controlled uh, party members. Right. Uh, the amount of data the team ended up incorporating around school life, character relationships, and spoken character dialogue was so large that there were fears it would not fit onto a single disc. Uh, the anime cutscenes were provided by Studio Hibari. Uh, the design of Inaba was based is based on a town on the outskirts of Mount Fuji. Its rural design was a source of conflict between Persona 4's developers, as each staff member had their own image of a rural town, according to director Katsura Hashino. <laughs> you mean not every single rural town is the exact same as the other rural town? What? It's true. Uh, the entire staff went location hunting to determine Inaba's design. Inaba does not represent a country town that has tourist attractions, but rather a non-notable nowhere place. Hashino described the town as being, for better or for worse, a run-of-the-mill town. Unlike other role-playing games which may have large worlds for the player to explore, Persona 4 takes place mostly in Inaba. This reduced development costs and enabled Atlas to expand upon other portions of the game in return. A central setting also allows players to sympathize with the daily life that passes in the game. To prevent the setting from becoming stale, the development team established a set number of in-game events to be created to keep the game exciting. The choice of Japanese myth myth mythical fig figures there we go, for the characters' personas as opposed to Greco-Roman deities used in earlier games was directly inspired by the new setting. The appearances of personas were based on the characters' personalities. The design team had a good deal of creative freedom while creating personas because, of, because although Japanese deities have well-defined character traits, their appearances are traditionally unspecified. The shadows were created by Hashino without much outside consultation, although he had help from female staff for female shadow selves. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right. I'm just thinking, like, Yosuke is a rad frog man now, since yep. it's based off his personality. <laughs> uh, despite living in the countryside, Persona 4 characters were designed to look and sound normal and like modern high schoolers, according to lead localization editor Nick Mar Maragos. Initially, he wrote the game's cast as being more rural than what was really called for. The characters aren't really hicks. They just happen to live in a place that's not a me major metropolitan area. Give while interviewing members, Yes, there you go. <laughs> uh, while interviewing members of Persona 4's development team, 1UP.com editor Andrew Fitch noted that the characters from the city, Yosuke and the protagonist, have more stylish hair than the other characters. Art director Shigenori Sojima used hairstyles to differentiate between characters from the city versus the country. With Yosuke in particular, I gave him accessories such as headphones and a bicycle to make it more obvious that he was from the city. You know, things that you have in the city. Headphones and a bicycle. <laughs> you Narakami has a bowl cut. It's true. <laughs> That's considered more stylish hair? Look, 2008 was a different time. You're right, you're right. And you know what? If anybody can work that bowl cut, you Narakami does it. Mm -hmm. That boy rocks that bowl cut. It's true. Uh, this game has received a uh, major critical acclaim, obviously. Yeah. Uh, on Metacritic, the PS2 version had a 90 out of 100, the Vita version a 93 out of 100, the PC version 87 out of 100, the PS4 version an 88 out of 100, the Xbox version a 90 out of 100, and the Switch version a 91 out of 100. Good reviews, it seems, obviously. Mm hmm. Uh, sales wise. It sold in Japan on its initial its initial first week 193,000 copies. Uh, it would have been, the PS2 version would go on to sell 358,899 copies in Japan. Uh, in North America, it was the highest selling PS2 game on Amazon for two consecutive weeks, and they sold some other stuff with it. Uh, the Japanese release of P4G on Vita sold 324,357 physical copies and 21,020 digital copies, adding up to 704,276 copies sold for the PS2 and Golden versions in Japan. Worldwide, P4G ultimately shipped over 1.5 million copies on the Vita. Uh, the 2020 Windows release of P4G on Steam was also a success, having sold over 500,000 units worldwide in less than a month. Uh, Sega stated that its sales were much stronger than expected and they would continue to promote porting older games of theirs to PC. 
Uh, on June 30th, 2021, Atlas announced that the PC version of P4G had reached 1 million units sold, bringing P4G's sales to 2.5 million copies sold worldwide for the Vita and PC platforms. This obviously doesn't have uh, numbers for the, the newer releases, but I would assume those also did pretty well. But they're also on Game Pass, so maybe those numbers are also kind of skewed a bit, so... Yeah. Who knows? Uh, it was... Persona 4 was awarded the PlayStation 2 Game Prize in the Famitsu Awards 2008, voted by readers of Famitsu. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's see here. Games Radar in 2013 ranked it as the as its fifth best video game story ever. Uh, in 2015, Games Radar named P4G the 53rd best game ever. And in that same year, US Gamer placed the game fifth on its 10th top, uh, on the 15 best games since 2000 list. A mouthful. Mm -hmm. uh, Persona 4 obviously has also gone on to spin countless sequels and everything. There was the two fighting games, Persona 4 Arena and Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. There was Persona Q and Persona Q2, and then Persona 4 Dancing All Night. There was a manga. There was a light novel. There was two animes. There was a stage production. Like they they've done everything they could to ring out as much Persona Four as they could after yeah. this game became a success. Yep. <laughs> Just like got it all out there. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. Um but yeah, you were saying earlier how like you know, you played this game when it came out originally. Yes. Uh I did not do that because I was in 2008, I was a baby and didn't, still didn't understand how to play a JRPG. Oh, no. Um, so I didn't get into it until I watched the uh, the infamous Giant Bomb Endurance run of it. And that what got me into this game and eventually into the Persona series as a whole. And then, you know, I bought a Vita just to play P4G. <laughs> as Worth. probably a lot of people did. Worth. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, my, my Vita is still in, like, the Persona golden stuff. Yep. So it was yep. mine. Yep. So yeah, like I and I when I first played through this game, even though I, like I'd seen all of it, I still was just like enamored with it and everything, and had gone on to play it like multiple times afterwards. But you know, like you like we talked said at the top of the show, like it had been quite a while since I'd last played this game. I, right. I, I would say it's probably been since like since I actually like fully completed it, like when I did a playthrough of it on YouTube, and that would have been like six seven years ago i feel like the last time i played it i was still living in like the dc area yeah so it's like you know it's been a handful of years for both of us yeah yeah i mean like i got a whole phd since then you did <laughs> and obviously you know we've had some uh interesting an interesting relationship with the persona series since then correct correct that is that is um that is a good way to put it yeah, like, you know, we're not high on Persona 5. No. Uh, I played PQ2 when that came out and did not like that game. No. I played um, that game, too, and I didn't really like it. And I was so excited, too, because it was like, FMC, you're back, I love you, and then the game was bad. <laughs> the one good part of that thing about that game. Yeah. So, like, yeah, and like, you know, obviously a, a big highlight that has kind of come out since then has been, like, you know, hey, there's a lot of weird stuff in this game. Yeah. And especially in the, the Persona 3 through 5 uh, tetralogy or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of, like, how characters are perceived and everything and, like, how different kinds of people are perceived, I guess, is the the real way to describe it. Yeah. And, like, you, you can obviously, like, expand that to Catherine as well in, in terms of, like, how that game fumbles a lot of things. Yeah, no kidding. Um, so I was very curious going back to this game in particular because, you know, there is the stuff with, with Naoto. There's the stuff with Kanji. Mm -hmm. There's the stuff with Yosuke. Yosuke. And just, like, seeing how that stuff was going to play out in a, in a new playthrough of this game. Yeah. Even though, like, obviously we know how this game plays out. We've played this game multiple times. We know how it works and everything. But, like, just seeing it again with fresh eyes just to see, like, you know, how exactly is this going to play out now for us? Right, right. So I think that's the, that's where we should start with this. It's like, did did playing through it again change your thoughts about any of this, or did like, is it still basically the same as you were expecting it to? Um, 
I mean, for me, like, I, I still feel that, like, I think they were very clear with what they were trying to do with Kanji and Naoto. Um, and especially, I guess, because I understand, like, that there was a Japanese context there. Mm -hmm. um, I think the thing that has aged the most poorly of those three scenarios is Yosuke's dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, I, it made sense in 2008 because that's how, like, teenage boys talked. Yeah, like, I would say if you if you divorce it from the context of like you know this speech is very obviously bad and poor and like completely terrible like you shouldn't do that especially the people you consider your friends a hundred percent but if you look at it in the context of like is this an accurate representation of a high school student in 2008 100 percent yes a hundred percent it is it absolutely is like i knew that guy i definitely knew that guy yeah um so yeah, there were a few times I was like, Yosuke, please, come on, bud. You you gotta mm -hmm. you gotta chill. Um But yeah, I understand where people come from. Um I don't think that the the kanji and Naoto things are fumbled as like as poorly as anything in Catherine. Um, I think the thing with the kanji and Naoto Yeah, I think the thing with the kanji and Naoto stuff is that they they weren't going to fully commit to it regardless. Right, right. Um, but, I mean, that's also not the story they were trying to tell. Um, like, the whole thing with Kanji is specifically, like, how people have bullied him for, like, liking cute, cute Um And how he just doesn't feel like he's accepted. Uh, he, does, he just wants to be liked. Um... So, you know, he's had things like what Yosuke's been saying to him for, like, <laughs> two sections of the game at this point. Um, about, like, oh, man, you know, this kind of stuff you're into is real gay, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, he does have a moment where he's like, oh, oh, I have a crush on this guy. Am I actually gay? Is, is, this, is this what's going on? And then, you know, it, it's more about him, like, coming to terms with, like, no, I'm, I'm myself. This is what I like. This is what I do that's it um and then you have yosuke just throwing that weird thing in the tent where he's like oh i'm afraid to sleep next to you i'm like jesus christ yosuke i'm gonna kick you out of this tent myself <laughs> um <laughs> go sleep on the rock i don't give a shit. um and i think that that's a really i think that's a cool story because you have this guy who's like the biggest character of the party um like physically um you also have this dude who's like got this really bad reputation is really rough um but he's one the quickest to actually accept his shadow out of any of them mm -hmm. like he immediately is like yeah you're me but like you suck so what are you doing saying all that with my face that's lame um so it shows a bit of the the strength of kanji um and like that he can be pretty confident in who he is and what he feels like um which then is shown through his social link and i think that like <laughs> I don't know that it was ever really about his sexuality. Like, I think that was just a moment of, like, maybe, maybe they were right about me type thing. I don't know. I think you could certainly make a story, like, of Kanji's where it does explore that side. But this is not the team that, do that does that. Mm -mm. And especially not in 2008. Mm-mm. No, and I mean, like, there could be an argument that Kanji's by, and that's fine. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I could believe that honestly, because there are a few times he's like, "Hey, protag, finger guns." Um, but like, literally everybody wants to jump his bones, so, um, uh, you know, there's that, and then there's the whole like, cut romance with Yosuke. Like, they were never gonna go that that route mm -hmm. 
There just weren't. Like that's that's not that's not this team. That's not what they do. No. Um, and that's unfortunate, but um you know this. Many people probably don't know this. Kanji's one of my favorite characters in Persona 4. Mm-hmm. I love Kanji. And I think that he just has I was going to say so many layers, but I don't want to compare him to Shrek. He's an onion. He's an onion. Um, he He's just got a lot of depth to him that's really well done. Um, I don't know. I'm talking a lot. What do you think? No, I, I, I agree with you. Like, I think what all you said is pretty spot on, especially, like, looking at this game through a 2023 lens yeah. compared to, you know, in the past. But, like... I think it's just the thing of like there have been a lot of people who have wanted this story to be this thing in particular Mm -hmm. and I wish it was that thing for those people yeah 100% I wish it was that thing but again I think the thing is you can't expect that from this team with the track record they have they were never going to do that unfortunately right and again especially not in 2008 no but like I think there's a lot of fun things and like a lot of interesting things to look at with like with Kanji's story especially because like you look at it because it's like essentially it's him battling like you said like it's a battle of him trying to find himself in this in this world especially in a rural town where like people are going to be much more judgmental of you <laughs> tell me about in it in general um and also just like him trying to just fight around with this idea of like what masculinity is and like destroying this notion of toxic masculinity as well and just like you know being himself like you said so i think like there's a lot of interesting ideas especially with kanji but there's also just the the parts where like you know it looks like they could have gone in one direction or in this direction but then they just kind of like just drop it or just kind of don't really mention again or just it it basically becomes the butt of jokes yeah and i mean you do have the whole like gender dichotomy here with kanji and naoto um Mm -hmm. Because you have Kanji, who is really into, like, crafting stuff and cute stuff and that kind of thing, which are traditionally considered, like, feminine hobbies. Mm -hmm. Um, But then you have Naoto, who's, like, for a good portion of the game, pretending to be a guy because she wants to be taken seriously in her profession, which is a very male-dominated profession in Japan. Mm -hmm. Um. So you have the two of them, like, fighting against gender norms in strange ways, but, um, and, like, trying to accept who they are in in that world of these gender norms. Which, especially for, like, characters that are, like, what, like, 15? Incredibly difficult. Yeah, they're 15. They're both 15, I think. Yeah, so. It's a lot, it's a lot for... A kid that age to really try and go through and like figure all that out right right um i i do think that it's a cool thing to have the two of them like i don't want to say they're paired necessarily but like there there is the dynamic between them i think that it was a a, a good idea to have the two who are are like going against the the gender norms there to to have their their moments together i suppose Mm -hmm. um because some of the other characters don't really have i mean honestly you could argue the same for chie because she has a lot of um a lot of the like fighting against it too because you know she has the whole thing with yukiko's castle where like she's the prince because she's the one that defends and she has some of that in her social link too Mm -hmm. so i mean you've got a whole lot of these kids who are breaking out of the mold of what they are supposed to be doing in quotes and not supposed to be doing I think one of the th- that's kind of one of the things that makes, in a way, this game kind of disappointing is that like you see these aspects of the story that like really could be interesting and like handled incredibly well. Like you see, like they're j- they're almost there. They almost have it, but like they just don't do it. They just don't know how to do it. This team doesn't know how to do it, and they just they kind of fumble it at you know at the goal line. Yeah. 
and it's that's it's the part that kind of sucks about this because like you could really see a story like multiple stories in this where they could really go full into this and like make something that's really interesting and like really challenges things but like obviously as we mentioned you know time and time again through all of our personal episodes like you know they were they would never be able to do this because like this is not that team that does this right it's just like it's a bummer at the end of the day it's just kind of a bummer um but yeah i like i think naoto's whole story as well like there is definitely the the transcoding of it yeah and a lot of people have looked at into it as that which you know it's cool that, that a lot of people are able to get that kind of story from it. Mm-hmm. But again, I don't think it's a thing of like, that's the story they were going to tell. No. Or even were going to attempt to tell. Like a lot of it is just the idea of like, like you said, she wants to be taken seriously in this male dominated workforce. And she has to do this. She has to do that by basically pretending to be a guy in order to be taken seriously. Or else if they knew that she was a gal, like they would just be like, ah, oh, whatever you're not good at your job you're just a kid we don't need to trust you or like listen to you or anything like who cares and that's one thing i was gonna say is that a big part of naoto's dungeon and story is the comparison of like oh you're just a kid we shouldn't take you seriously more so than the the gender part i mean even down to the design of the the like shadow naoto with the long like lab coat that goes over her hands Mm -hmm. um like they very much were playing up that I'm a child type thing. And that goes into the whole I want to be taken seriously because I'm good at what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, like the shadow doesn't specifically like give off a like feminine aura or a hyper masculine aura or anything. It gives off a child aura. Right. Um, and I think that if they were going to, which again, this is not the team that would have done this, but if they were going to actually consider doing a, a trans route, they wouldn't have leaned hard onto that kid side of it. They would have leaned hard onto the gender side of it. Yeah, I think that's that's a fair a fair point to make. Because even like the dungeon in and of itself is based off of like old Japanese TV shows. Mm-hmm. Um, like, they're, they're toys. Old hero shows. Old yeah, sentai old, shows. Old sentai yeah. shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're toys that you fight. Um, like, that's... It, it's it's based on, like, quote-unquote kid stuff. Yeah. Um, which, again, is not reflecting the, the gender situation that's going on there. It's reflecting the age situation. But I, I will say, like, I think if there's one thing that this game has done is that, like, basically inspired people who, were, like, were fans of this game and wanted those kinds of stories to basically be like, I'll just make my own story of this. Yeah. I'll just do my own thing. Yeah. And that's real cool that, it, like, those people are able to put those stories out there you know, because they could just look at this game and be like, you know, it's almost there, but what if it was different? And they can just basically be like, all right, I'll just go make that. I'll do the thing. Yeah. I'll do which, the thing they clearly were going to do. So. Which is great. I mean, like, yeah. I, I, I think that it's great that people can, like, see these characters as representatives, even if mm-hmm. that was definitely not their intention. Yeah. Um, Like, there's very very clearly a story that was being told by the Persona 4 team, but that doesn't mean that, like, it's harmful for people to have those interpretations. No, of course not. Um, and I'm glad that people are having that conversation, at least, um, of, like, what it, what could this potentially mean? Um, and, like, hey, I don't know, like, I've struggled with this, 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 and this, and so I, I really enjoy this character because I understand what they were going through in an extent, but even if they're not like the exact representation you thought you were going to get. Yeah. Um, like I think that that's something that I, I think is great about this game and still holds up is that the character writing in this is still very good. Um, yes. like each character has their own very distinct characterization, very distinct character voice. Um, they're, 
they're really fun to have their social links and hang out with because you get to know them better. Um, I think we mentioned this when we talked about Persona 3, but like they genuinely feel like they're friends and that they like each other. Yeah. Whereas Persona 3 team feels more like we're just working together and we live in the same dorm. Mm-hmm. I think one of the, the things that I really enjoyed playing through this game again was seeing the we- not I guess not the weird, but like the maybe the unusual pairing of Kanje and Kanji Kanje <laughs> Kanje <laughs> Kanji and Rise yes as like bros yes um I don't like that she bullies him at one point but um the two of them as bros is really good like you'll see them occasionally like talking to each other or like mm-hmm. they'll have like little comments to each other and I love that I think that's so cute they they are definitely the kind the type of like bros who just like will just get on each other. Oh yeah. But like it's definitely in a playful way where it's like they'll just like nag at each other and do all that sort of stuff. But it's it's such a fun dynamic between it's those so two. Fun. They're and it's very, so unexpected. It's they're very kind of different people. Yeah. From just different walks of life. But yeah. like they come together and it's like, hey, <laughs> Like, like going that, in, that part's real fun. It's it's really fun. Like going in, you know that like Chie and Yukiko are good friends, um, mm-hmm. and so like that's to be expected. But then like when you get a a, a a duo like this and their dynamic, you're like, oh huh. Well, I wasn't expecting that, but like y'all genuinely care about each other, and that's really fun. Mm-hmm. And you get to see like at different points, just like different pairings between like this entire group setting and everything of just like you know. Here's two characters that you may not necessarily associate as like really good pals in this group, but they're just going out and hanging out with each other. Like there's the there's specific moments in the game where like you go out grocery shopping with uh, Dojima and Nanako, mm-hmm. and basically you'll get like these weird pairings of characters that show up. Like there's the one specifically of like Yukiko and Kanji are hanging out and they're talking about like Kanji dyeing his hair and all that sort of stuff, and like mm-hmm. Yukiko wants to change her hair up because she wants to have a cool change and everything so that she asks kanji about that and everything and that's where you get the first like inkling of like you know what kanji actually looks like with when he doesn't dye his hair and all that sort of stuff and it's like you wouldn't really expect those two characters to really like go out and hang out by themselves but like they're doing it because like everyone in this group is just pals with each other so that's what i was gonna say is that it it doesn't feel like everything hinges on the main character in the world of persona 4 like you no. you, you know that like um. Shoot, I'm blanking on basketball. Ko, he loves them balls. Um, yes. <laughs> like Ko and like I has a crush on Ko. Um, and you find that out like during her social link. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a few times that like you'll go out and um. The the girl from band. Um. Ayumi Ayumu. Ayame? Ayame? She has an A name. She has an A name, but, like, she'll run into the the sports guys and hang out. And you're like, I I didn't expect them to be friends, but I guess they're friends, too. Yeah. Um, So, like, you you see people actually, like, talking to each other separately from you. Like, not everything revolves around you as, well, you, why you? (laughs) Um, You know? Like, it, it, it feels like an actual like friend group and like an actual community yeah yeah it does um and like you'll talk to people on the streets and they'll be like oh yeah like this person did this kind of thing and you're like oh okay wow okay right. which i think is is helped by the fact that like this is just a rural town where everyone's yeah kind of everyone knows know each, each other, other. <laughs> yeah yeah but i mean like you wouldn't even necessarily like i said i wouldn't expect the the girl from band to be friends with the sports guys but she is yeah and yeah. like you'll run into them while you're just out and you'll get social link points for all of them and just chat and have fun Mm -hmm. um and i really really like that you don't get as much of that in persona 3 no um like you you don't get the sense that anybody really hangs out with anybody (laughs) uh except for like everyone just hangs out with you and that's it (laughs) with you or like akihiko will hang out with mitsuru sometimes and even then, it's kind of just like, I mean, we knew each other as kids, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, like, I don't know, Akihiko and Shinji will occasionally go have some ramen or something. Yeah. Um, I guess Akihiko's the most social of the group. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, which is wild because... Social butterfly Akihiko Sonata. Oh, God, that boy is not a social butterfly. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it just felt like... Like I said, not, the, not everything revolves around you as the main character. Which um, they do a good job of, like, showcasing that, I think, in, like, the sequel games as well. It's mm -hmm. like, anytime you show back up, even, like, in the epilogue of this game, it's like, everyone's still pals and, like, yeah. you're hanging out. Like, they're not just, like gone their separate ways because you've you've left or anything it's just like no nah, we'll still hang out and everything and i love that and like they still like talk to nanako and stuff all the time yeah. like they didn't abandon her because you're gone like they they still go and see her and and um i'm sure they see her at units <laughs> yep <laughs> um but it just feels really supportive and friendly and i i do really appreciate that which is great because you kind of need that when you have a story a series as like a murder mystery um, something else that I wanted wanted to bring up when we talked about this mm -hmm. is that um, Persona Four did one thing way better than Five, mm -hmm. which I mean it did many things way better than Five, but <laughs> um, the uh, the devil social link, the nurse, yes, um. So you go hang out with her when it's like nighttime and she's an adult woman and there are multiple times where she'll like blatantly hit on you. Yeah. Um, and you know, you can play along with it or you usually like you get the most points if you rebuff her. Mm -hmm. Um, but then like, as you continue the social link, you she says basically like, yeah, like I, I'm just f you. Like I'm not, not really interested in you. I have all this stuff going on. Um, and like she obviously cares about you as a person, but you don't date the adult woman. Yeah, it's pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, amazing how it could be a situation where you don't date an adult woman. Like the 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 gal with the son, you don't date her. She's married. You know, Arakami popped his collar and is like, no, no, I will date someone appropriate my age. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And like the the adult women have some self respect here. Good for them. Like holy, shit, the bar is on the floor, but it it Persona Four still got over it. It's <laughs> a little hop over it. Just a little, little hop. A little hop. Um, but I, I when I was doing that social link hand, I was like, oh god, this is gonna be one of those because I didn't remember it. But it and was. Like, but it I wasn't one of those. Yeah, and like they they really pivoted towards like, oh man, this this gal's been through some stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, like she talks about like a kid dying on her watch. Yeah, that's like, intense. She doesn't, she doesn't understand if she really wants to be like in the medical field anymore and everything. And it's like it gets real heavy by the like in the back half of it. And you're just like, oh, okay. And then she ends up like leaving the country. Yeah, she goes on like a medical retreat in like Africa. Africa. Or something? Yeah. 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 And you're just like, oh. Oh. Huh. Yeah, like she she was sad that she like left that kid who was who was dying and then he died and mm -hmm. um and she was like oh no I'm abandoning my patients blah 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 but like it was never supposed to be a romantic route even though she like plays up that that right, right, role right. at the beginning and I really appreciated that like again the bar is on the ground but it made me like that social link a lot more than I I probably would have and even when they try to do like the flirty teacher thing and like the back half of the game everyone's just like no no yeah, no 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 like no one is interested in her and what the, she has to offer literally no one <laughs> it's so funny like she's just throwing herself at them and they're just like no <laughs> ma'am i'm only interested in you if you give me uh, costumes and that's it yep otherwise i will never talk to you <laughs> otherwise get out of here get out of here um, but again, these are easy things that that you you can. Persona Five just tripped and fell was, I, directly in that hole. Yeah, I will say as well. Like if you if we mentioned the teacher, like they don't they don't let Hanako get off easy at all in this game, and it's not good. Nah, like there's so much fat shaming in this game, and it's oh not yes, good. Yes, there is. Um, that is not good. Um, I, I, I think that what they could have done is acknowledge the fact that she's 
a huge jerk all the time. Yeah. Like, shame her for her personality, maybe, because that's bad. Like, that that was not cool. I mean, the only thing that I think that's interesting about it is that she never, like, falls into it or anything. Like, she'll just, like, rebuff it immediately. Like, no, I don't care. Yeah. I am who I am. Shut up. But, yeah, like, I mean, it's it's not good. But, again, this is a game from 15 years ago. And, hey, it turns out high school kids can be Yeah, what? Who who could have seen that coming? Yeah. So, yeah, like, that, that again, that's another part of this game that just does not age well in the slightest. No, and, I mean, like... Again, there are there are actual like flaws in some of these people that they make fun of that that you know you could mention that they're bad at this kind of thing. Um like with with their teacher, I think they make fun of her a few times for like being old, even though she's like probably in her thirties or forties. Mm-hmm. Um you could have made fun of her for the fact that she's hitting on a teenage boy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Which they do make wow. fun of her for that too. Um, but yeah, that I I forgot to even bring up the fat shaming. Although, good. rest in pieces, Yosuke's motorbike. Well, it's, it's it's broken for like a couple of months, and it's fine. Yeah, I mean he gets it fixed. He does. But she was real rude about that. She was real rude about that. Um, like I said, her personality sucks. It has nothing to do with like her outward appearance. Right. Um I'm trying to think if there's anything else that like stood out to be as like a good or bad thing. <laughs> Tell me about Marie. <laughs> oh my god, do you really want me to talk about Marie? I mean look, we know you are a noted Marie hater. I am a noted Marie drinking, hater. Drinking that hater raid. You're was there right. anything replaying this game that like made you change your mind at all on her, or was it basically still no. like, yeah, I do not like this girl? <laughs> no, I. There's nothing about her that I think is good. Nothing. I would get completely angry whenever I would go into the velvet room, and it's like, oh, there's a piece of paper on the floor. I'm like, God damn it! Skip. Skip. The only time the, only time the poem bit was good was when they made Aki Akihiko read it? personal Q. Right. That's the only thing that's good about the that poems. That was really funny. That was really good. That's the only time that the poems have ever been good. Um, but like, even her dungeon sucks. Oh, the dungeon's bad. The dungeon's real bad. Um, I almost forgot to do her social link. <laughs> scrambled at the end to get it i did i did which turns out in like december she's basically december or january anyway one of those months she's basically available like all the time anyway so it, it has to be december because like she's gone be in january yeah you're right you're right but she basically calls you is like oh i'm available more now and we're like oh okay well good thing I that i scrambled I gotta do this <laughs> got it done well I, I had basically gotten it done at that point because i panicked um but then it gave me time to do other other social links, so yeah. Um, I just don't like her as a character. I I don't like her personality. I don't like her dialogue. I think she's just like mean to people for no good reason. And then you give her a sh- dungeon. Nope. Nope. I, I stand by my Marie hatred. The, the the two good Marie moments in Persona 4 are when she recites the, the Risei commercial back to Risei at the end of her dungeon when she's hugging you. Mm-hmm. And then at the end when she's a weather girl. <laughs> I do like the weather girl part. That's funny. Like, that's funny. That is funny. And Nanako's like, she controls the weather. And like, um, maybe uh, actually? Maybe. Uh. That's possible, but we're not going to talk about that. Yeah. Um, but I mainly like that because of the the investigation team's reaction to her being the weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Otherwise, it was like, ooh, ha- have have. Did your opinion change at all on Mari? 
no i mean she's basically kind of been like she's a part of the game yeah she's part <laughs> like, of i'm not i'm not really like high or low on her per se like she's just she's just there yeah if she wasn't there i would be okay if she was still there i'd be okay like i can take it or leave it probably her 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 moments that are good are in like the anime just because that that the golden anime is just weird in general so yeah i mean the golden anime is like a new game plus plus um the the third option choice always you narakami it's, it's a weird thing it's so weird and i love it like honestly mm -hmm. both of the persona 4 anime like pick the weird you narakami and i'm very like yes good. very good anime like that's a good adaptation i don't give a what people say holy hard nipples it's cold exactly <laughs> what else do you need out of life <laughs> oh man um yeah this this is this is a video game for sure yeah i mean like i still came away from it like having very positive feelings about it mm-hmm um, I still think it is a really, really good game. There are, I, I think there I was are flaws. Yeah, I think I was surprised by how much I was like, I, st I still pretty much enjoy this game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, this is a good video game. Yeah. Yeah. Very cozy. It is very cozy. I had a really good time playing it. I started a new game plus immediately after, and I was like, I can't do this right now. I cannot do this. I have other things I have to do. <laughs> But I was like, I don't really want to leave. And it's it's nice having it on the Switch because I could just play it in bed and in just be bed. comfy. And it's on a bigger screen than the Vita. Yeah. The one thing I will say is that after playing it, I was like, man, I wish they had ported Persona 4 Dancing All Night as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because now I really want to play that too. <laughs> same. Oh, man, same. Um, but it, I mean, it's a shame that like that game is kind of locked behind um, that P three, the P three and P five dancing game bundle. Yeah, and they didn't like put it out. I think by itself at all. So, but that that would be a great game to port over, because it probably wouldn't be that that hard to do. But probably not. Probably not gonna happen. It's unfortunate because it's really good. Yeah. Um, the best sequel persona of a game. Yeah, no, a, a thousand percent. That's the best sequel to a Persona game. Period. Full stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Which reminds me, like, also this OST is so good. Yep. God, it's so good. God, when it gets to January and the snow theme hits, and I was like, oh, oh man, this song's real good. I forgot about it. I did too. Heck. I forgot Heck. all about the snow theme. I was like, this is really good. That's why I was so excited when um, when I did the fishing stream in Persona 4. I was like, hey, we get the snow theme. But then like, we only get to hear it for a few minutes before I go to the fishing and there's no yeah. music. <laughs> it was very sad. Um, yeah, the, the OST is just really, really, really good. Really, really good. good. Um, fishing is harder than I remember it being. It's a, it's a very weird. It's a very weird fishing mechanic. I figured it out mostly, but uh, reading helps. Yes, that is true. Like, actually reading on the couch, not like me reading the instructions. <laughs> oh, yes, that's also true. <laughs> <laughs> um, Get there's that a little speed in. There was <laughs> something else I was going to bring up, and now I'm blinking on what it was. Um, 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 um. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I I really like Persona 4. I also mentioned this before the podcast, but I'm very thankful for Persona 4 because we are now friends because of Persona 4. Yeah, that, that's no joke. Yeah, it's no joke. It's no joke. That's absolutely no joke. <laughs> 100% we, we, are, we are friends because of Persona 4. We became friends in, what, what was it, 2015? Because yeah, we sounds, just started talking about right. Persona 3 and Persona 4. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, that's the guy that, that has the stuff that he goes on Persona 4 all the time. I like this person. <laughs> I 
And then we just uh, became best friends. And, you know, there's no yeah. looking back now. You're stuck with me. It's true. <laughs> so I, I am very thankful about that. The only the only negative I have about um, Persona 4, like, besides, you know, some of the things that I've talked about that are negative. God, I hate that yellow. It's very hard on my eyes. Oh, I got to go back and play through. I got to go back and um, do the, the quiz stuff. The quiz stuff? Yeah, the, the the bonus quiz stuff that you can do at the that's in like the 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 like the bonus TV section at the on the main menu. What? It, there's a there's an option in that game in in Golden in particular where like it, it bounces you into this like thing where you can watch all the cutscenes. There's this whole big thing about the Jungian uh, uh, psychology. Oh right, right, right. Of the game and everything. Um, I think there's like music you can listen to. There's like old trailers of other games you can watch, and then there's like a quiz show that you can do, which is what they do with the. the it's that's the thing they do in uh, the Golden Anime is the oh. quiz show. And they, they get it from this. Okay. All right, I have to. And do I remember that. that being very dumb. I remember what I was going to bring goofy. up. Yes. Um, I recently found out that people don't like the Genesis. What's the, I? I gotta remember what that is. The the boss theme, the like final the main, boss theme. Oh, the final boss theme. Um, I, I mean, to be fair, it's not as good as the P three final boss theme, but like that final boss theme is an all timer, so that's to be expected. But like, I, I I think I could see how people wouldn't like it because it's much slower and it has way more build to it. It does have a lot more build. Other uh, Persona final boss themes, but like I, I enjoy that theme. Like I really like the the motifs of uh, of Nevermore into it as well. Um, you have Reach Out to the Truth in there too, don't you? Yeah, I think so. Um, I I was so upset when I found out that people don't like it. Um, because it reminds me in a sense of um dancing mad but interesting because it has the different movements of the song depending on what's happening in the battle mm -hmm. um like as you progress through like different things are happening and i think that the thing that the genesis does so well that makes me like it quite a lot and apparently more than like most people that play persona 4 who knew um is that you you have this feeling when you're listening to the song of like this is insurmountable this is hopeless at the beginning mm -hmm. but then you keep getting like little blips within it of like the the lay motifs they're like oh oh maybe there is hope maybe there's something gonna happen here and then like it's still feeling like oh oh no this is not ending well this is not ending well until you get to like the big build up at the end that you're like no no we got this we got this it's great it's great also that moment at the end when you summon uh, Izanagi no Okami mm -hmm. chef's kiss chef's so good kiss. chef's kiss so good so good <laughs> um but yeah it, it 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 has the same kind of like movement feel as dancing mad in that sense. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I appreciate that. But yeah, it does not go as hard as Battle for Everyone's Souls, but it's but hard. But what else does? I would say it's really? hard to go that hard. <laughs> it's really hard to match that. Yeah. Um, God. It's still a thing. That, I, I listen to that song way more than I'm proud of. Um, <laughs> anyway, Persona 4. It, it. It sure is a video game. Holds up. Holds up very well, actually. Um, there are still some things in there that don't hold up well, but for the most part, very good game. You and Arakami, A+. Plus. Love that kid. I mean, I mean, I guess, like, to be fair, if you're playing a Katsura Hashino game, there's going to be just some that's not going to hold up. No, that's that's entirely true, which is why at the beginning of the podcast, when you were talking about development and you said his name on it, Yep. There's a reason a I did that. He's a stinker. 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 But yeah. Uh, game holds up. Thanks, Persona 4. 
you were a video game. You were a video game. You were a good video game. You are a very good video game. I like you, Persona 4. Looks like shit on my giant TV on my PS2 version, but that's neither here nor there. That's why we have the updated version. So it looks slightly better. <laughs> Yo, it's night and day. You should have seen yeah, it. I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. You should have so. seen it. <laughs> I mean, I played P3 on a big screen, so. Yeah, we played Fez, right? Yes. Yeah. Because I, I only own Fez. Uh, yeah. I don't own vanilla P3. That makes sense. I gave my brother vanilla P3. Sound like you gave him like an illness. <laughs> oh, I gave him vanilla P3. I doubt he played it. I doubt he even still has it, but I did give it to him. Well, there you go. Yep. That's Persona 4. I'm glad we finally got to talk about it. Yeah. After uh, so long. So long. It's been a long, long time. It's been a very long, long time. One could say it's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> Let's go do it for this week's episode. So yeah. So if you'd like more from us, head on over to seasonalanimecheckup.com or sac.cool where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like Jared and Al Watch. You can also find columns and reviews on the site as well. If you'd like more from Anladium, go to anladium.com. She's got columns and reviews. You can follow us on Twitter and TikTok at Anime Checkup. You can buy our books, One Shiny Moment, a critical analysis of Love Life, Sunshine, and Hot Tubs, and Pac-Man on Amazon.com. And you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash S-A-C-O-V-A. Buy us a slice of pizza, get access to unedited versions of the podcast early, and a whole wealth of bonus content as well. Mm -hmm. Next week will be something else. Something else. We got some stuff we could talk about, but we just don't, we haven't, you know, nailed down what it's going to be. So we'll figure that out and you'll hear it next week. True, true, true.